last time you spoke to Copper? Yesterday. Why? No, I haven't been able to get on to him. It's not answering his calls. Well, it only means one thing, doesn't it, Nick? When you're 0 4 and your chairman's trying to get in contact with you. What do you mean? Do you think that I enjoy firing people, Nick? Fire? Surely not. It's only been four rounds, Pete. Someone has to be held accountable for where we're at. Well, it's not Copper's fault. Well, who do you think's to blame? Just yesterday, you were on Dobson's show and you said he was safe. That was yesterday. We had a board meeting last night and decided he wasn't safe. You would be kidding me. This place is a shambles. Seriously. After four rounds. Yeah, sure. Hi. Uh, I need a meeting with Dobson, so uh, if you could organise that for later today, that'd be great. No, no, not in the same place as last time, the other place. No, the man may be an idiot, but I think he knows. And if it's not one, it'll be the other. We're only meeting in two places. Cheryl, I'm hanging up on you. Bye. secluded area, Pete. You know, if I wasn't a green belt, I'd say you were trying to kill me. <laughs> but seriously. I'm sure you've heard the rumours by now, John. Oh, really, Pete? Uh, what rumours would they be? Copper. Oh, yes, copper. Yes, proceed. Yeah. Well, they are true. We've, um, we have had to let him go. The playing group don't know. Copper doesn't know, we haven't been able to contact him. Ask you for a personal favour here, John, I trust your professionalism, and as such, don't break the story for a couple of days. Don't you worry, Pete. Your secret's safe with me. Breaking news, coach Copper Robinson has been sacked after just four rounds. In order to save his job today, he attended a three-hour meeting down at Whitehorse Oval, but it was all too little, too late. What can I say? I picked it. I did. I did pick it. That's true, I did. Since when did all this happen? Yeah, I found out today. Yeah, barely told me it was going to happen. What do you mean you found out today? Bentley rang me. He told me that it was going to happen. He told me that the couple was going to get sacked. Wait, so Bentley calls you, but he doesn't call me? I'm in the leadership group as well, will you? Yeah, we thought about calling him, but we didn't think he'd really care. Of course I'd care. I care for people. Mate, just the other day you were saying you want a copy get sacked. When did I say that? On Sunday. You said it right in front of him. He wouldn't put you for forward, remember? So you can wait up to a plus omega three smile. But still, I mean, come on, it's only been four rounds. I mean, the guy's got a wife and kids, for God's sake. Look, you care about his wife and kids, Dixie. Shut up, Lou. <laughs> Jeez. Just look at this mess. Dobson? Pete? Do you remember our meeting yesterday? Yes, I did, Pete. In fact, it was quite lovely. Nice scenery. Thoroughly enjoyed. Do you remember what I told you not to do? You told me not to break the copper story. What did you do? I broke the copper story. That's exactly what you did. Do you know why I asked you not to break the copper story, John? Well, I would imagine it was something to do with tact and commercial considerations. And of course, your personal privacy, Pete. That's spot on, John. It's absolutely spot on. I had dinner plans last night, John, with a close friend. It's funny you say that. I actually had dinner plans as well last night at my local bistro. If I book before 6 p.m. I need to go to Dorsia, Dobson. Dorsia. Well, I do hear that's very nice. It's not just nice, Dobson. It is fantastic. You know, I tried to get a table there once. Uh, they hung up on me. It's a very, very hard place to get a table, John. I had a table. But I couldn't use it. Why ever not, Pete? Because you broke the copper story. 
I had to spend the whole night on the phone with sponsors and partners and the press, explain to them the situation, and now I have to do the same thing with you here tonight. I'm not into making threats, John. Don't you ever do that to me again, okay? Well, I'm sorry, Pete. I apologize. No, you're not. You're right, I'm not. I saw a newsworthy story there and I broke it. And I'd do it again. Now, are you ready to go on? Yeah. Let's get the cameras rolling before I strangle you to death. Four rounds gone and Coach Copper has been sent packing. It's a harsh call, but uh, Pete, you feel it's the right one. Look, uh, John, it was a harsh call. It was a really hard call. Look, mm, uh, we reviewed the, reviewed the situation, we reviewed everything, and uh, ultimately, look, I do think it is the right call for the Colts. Um, there's a lot of things we have to consider. It's money, sponsorship, you know, morale of the players in the club. Mm. And, uh, so who's the right person for the job then? Look, I, I can't uh, bandy about any names just at this stage. We have uh, begun a search process, that's, that's for sure, and I can uh, confirm that here today with you. Um, we know that we've got a long road back to make finals, we know we've got a hard road back to make finals, and uh, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to pick the right man. Simple as that. Well said. All right. We'll see you next week, Pete. Good right, John. Right, we'll be back with more on Talking Grassroots.